Hi, friends. Yeah, I'm on. I'm alone at the moment. Uh, but you know, things happen. Um, so hello, how are you all? I know I've changed my angle just a tiny bit. I'm trying to out some new things, but I hope you're all well and I've missed seeing your names. So I'm going to say hello to you all right now. Hello, Night Vision. Hello, Jedi Council of America. Mr. Burger yourself. Say Wong, how are you? And I'm going to say hello to Brian. I hope you are doing well. And as well to L. Davey, who was here an hour, an hour ago waiting for Saber Sonic. Um, good to see you all. Van is alive and I will tell you what happened. So earlier his shop manager called and they were trying to set up a different laptop than usual to stream from and everything seemed to have been fine. Um, but he's having some mic issues. So they're trying to set that up right now. Um, unfortunately, that's just th those kind of things happen. Uh, and that's what happened <laughs> tonight. So um, starting off the show solo, um, I also want to point something out to you guys. Uh, so I'm ambassador for a couple of game gaming like decor companies and one's called canvas store k-a-n-v-i-s and uh they have some really cool stuff and they each bo both of the ones i'm ambassador for are actually have their own uh uh what's the word gosh i can't speak english tonight um they have a purpose they have a they have things that drive them that's uh, charity related and for them it's mental health awareness and so they have some really cool merch like stay tomorrow needs you with all of these things that are like very encouraging words for whoever's looking at it. So if you guys want to check them out, you go to Canvas store, you can use my code MitsoJD20 if you want 20% off. But uh, I love their purpose. They're, they have that. The other one is Nomad Trek. I'll talk about them another time. Um, but uh, they, they have, there's there's this world hunger. Uh, so there, there's this fighting world hunger. Um, anyway. I've got Van messaging me on Facebook, buddy. I cannot reply to you during a show. Um, all I don't know if you're using the mic that I sold you, you shouldn't have to have a, a whole software with it or anything. <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, let me see. Is there anything fun that you did this last week since I've been on uh, in the last week? Let me know in the comments if you've done anything fun. And then in a moment, I will do some nerdy news and maybe we can get Van on soon. I mean, I mean, Van, I don't know if you have the show on. Um, oh gosh. So, okay. Van, if you have the show on, listen to these instructions. Okay. You're going to go to your computer. <laughs> I'm giving tech support live on the show. Um, you're going to need to set up your mic in the, uh, laptop possibly. Um, goodness gracious sakes alive. Okay. He's actually trying to sign in. It looks like. Oh, Hel hello. Good girl. What? Can't oh, see okay, go ahead. So, I mean, if you're going to use that, that's fine. I, I see what you're going to do. Hi, Steven. Hi. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hi, Van. Hello. One second. Hey, this you're is on not a working. Tab Are you on a tablet? I, I am. Yeah, we can't get no. the microphone to work. I was just about to give you live tech support if you were watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to figure it out this week, but uh, we have I'm at least a backup to, computer. If Steven has a laptop with him, uh, I will send him instructions during the interview on how to set up the mic, and then you can switch over during the outro. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then he just went outside. <laughs> well, whatever. Anyway, uh, of course, they Wong for, assumed you forgot. So, of course. Um, yeah, I hope you're doing well, sir. Uh, Say Wong said he saw the Ghostbusters movie. I saw it last night. It was very good. It was a lot of fun. Oh. I asked what they did this week. Uh, killing time. <laughs> All the fun I had is a lot of private nature. Oh, night vision. This is a family show, sir. <laughs> Ooh, night vision's and back. Jedi Council also saw. He said I watched Ghostbusters with the Ghostbusters. So they cosplay. That's a lot of fun. Um, Man. Yes. How how is everybody doing tonight? We are in show. We're live, right? Yes, <laughs> yes we are live. We are live. I'm so disorganized. I, I just said I was going to give you tech support live on the show because the show <laughs> is live. People are talking. I have comments up because I asked them what they did this week. That was fun. <laughs> What's up, nice vision? So happy to see you here again for week three in a row. Duran. Hello, Duran Duran. Hello, Duran. Um, hope you are well. That bottle is gigantic with a gazillion stickers. 
Hey, could you get my other water bottle? This has got stale water in it. Oh, okay, thank you. Stale water How are you, Miss Madison? You. Um, I'm doing fine. Um, I I am very excited by, and I told Steve and I sent him a link. I bought a new computer today. Um, you bought a new computer. Stuff. Yeah, and it, uh, oh. it'll it ships in a few days. I don't know when it'll be delivered yet, um, but it will replace my desktop that I currently have. Wow. Um, yeah, and it'll uh, it'll be absolutely oh. amazing in comparison. So Woo-hoo. I'm very excited by that. Um, but that's and it's been a, it's been an interesting week in general, though. How about you, sir? I just got back. That's why I was running late today. I just got back from Concord's uh, Star Wars celebration out there. Um, unfortunately, their main headliner, Jim Cummings, had to drop out. Um, but we did see David Gonzalez, our good buddy, David Gonzalez, Akrev, was there. And C. Andrew Nelson was there as well. We made a lot of great friends, as always. So it was a great event. Next week, we will be at SAC Anime for all of those who are going to be in the Sacramento area. That is where you can find us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Nice. All right. So, but let's go ahead and get to... Nerdy News! Nerdy News. All right. So the first on the news is a Skywalker Saga Marathon coming to theaters on May the 4th. So if you want to check that out, I mean, I'm very excited for that, but if you want to see the Skywalker Saga again, you can see it on May 4th. Um, I think it looks like because of the pictures in here, um, and I posted the link for the article in the comments, but it looks like it's going all the way back from, uh, from the, from the first movie that was released through these sequels. One to nine. It looks like it doesn't look, it does not look like though. There's any, um, they don't see, you know, there is Emma Dallas. So all the prequels are there too. I think it's all of them. Uh, it looks like wow. it's going to be re-releasing in the theaters, which yeah. is very exciting. I already got the Lucas invite. Nice, Mr. Berger. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> 20 hours. 20 hours. It's a marathon, like 20 yes. hours straight? 20 hours straight. Wow. I'm, tired. I'm not sure I can even handle 20 hours of Star Wars. I, I, did, I did all five movies of Twilight once at the movie theaters. In one setting? Yeah, they give you they give you like uh fifteen minutes in between each movie to like go to the bathroom, get snacks, whatever. They give you time in between right. each movie. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun and uh we did something kind of okay, for, raise your hands, so to speak. If you've ever yeah. heard of MST, if you've ever heard of MST three K. Oh heck yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Science okay. Theater so, three thousand. Yes. Nowadays they do something called riff tracks, which is audio recordings of them making you know doing the same kind of thing and you sync it up to your movie um by they tell you where to pause it into three two one pause Mm -hmm. and then when that logo darkens or whatever you hit play and so you listen to it so we actually took recordings of the first four uh twilight movies with us in our ear to listen to them during the movie in the movie theater and then the fifth (laughs) because it was brand new but yeah, right. so if you guys want to check out the information, I posted the link uh, in the chat. If you're watching the upload, it's in the description below and you can find out more information about that. Now, last week, I gave you guys a um, sort of chronological order list of the High Republic graphic novel. And one of the reasons I did that is uh, Acolyte trailer, which broke Lucasfilm yeah. records this week on the Internet. That takes place during the High Republic time. So that's to kind of yeah. give you an idea of what the world is like. Now, if this person in this picture looks a little bit familiar to you, especially when you saw her face at the end of the trailer, um, she's actually plays Rue in Hunger Games, but it's been a few years, so she's grown up a bit. Um, she looks like an she's the one that you see uh, that you see them fighting, like you see the really cool fight sequence with Trinity, right? Um, right. And and I'm very very excited that she's in there too. Um, I'm totally. Why am I blanking on Trinity's name? Um, my head is just not there. Um, so I'm very excited that sh- they're both in it. Um, and then uh, the gentleman from uh, Squid Games also in it. Uh, yeah. The lead, the lead actor in that. He's also in there, too. So I'm very, very excited for that. I, say, I have to say, 
nice. I have to say, and I, I would love to get a consensus of people here online of, the, of who we have in the audience. You know, a lot of times, especially with all the, you know, the YouTube channels, you're always going to have the haters and the negative people. I've been hearing so much negative backlash, but only from online. Like, I feel like when I talk to people individually, people are excited for this but when you watch it online it say it makes it seem like everybody's like upset and nobody wants to see this so i'm interested to know how our people in our community feel about this are you guys excited are you um you know i guess there's some of the political stuff with the, the director and stuff like that none of that bothers me it looks like a fantastic show i love it it's like it's supposed to be like um you know an investigator almost like a almost like a cop drama kind of movie um yeah, and so, i love that idea yeah if you guys haven't seen the trailer yet it, it should be in the link that i posted um and it does look to be great mr booger i do agree um and i think it looks i think it looks great like i i don't really know anything about the political stuff with the director but i'm also pretty good at like separating um right private lives from like their, what they do for their work kind of a thing. I'm pretty, I'm pretty decent at that. Um, the only things right. I did see online were people complaining that things haven't been good since like the first Mandalorian season and blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and it's fine. People don't have to like it just because you like it or something, you know, like, right. People can have their opinions, but I think the one thing people need to make sure they don't do is crap and make people feel awful and shame people for liking something. <laughs> excuse me, that you don't like, you know? Unless like, it's The Last like Jedi. <laughs> anything. Yeah. I, just because, like, if someone gave me crap because I like Lord of the Rings or Marvel, that's wrong. Like, if like telling me that it, it affects my worth because I like those things versus, like, oh, I don't get understand what you like to things, but that's okay. I don't have to like them either myself or whatever. But right. just don't shame people. Because, you know what? Metso's all about, like, trying to be kind, usually. You know, right. That's my goal. I try to. I just try to be nice to everybody. Um, so Wong says, can we stop with the TV shows? Are you saying that you want a movie is what you're specifically wanting? I think part of the thing is, is over the years, for the last like 15, 20 years, TV writing has um, evolved so much. And the writers for TV have done amazing work that it turns out, you know, like TV is sometimes a little bit more lucrative and draws more people than movies. You know why? Because, a oh, hi, Davey. Good, glad to see you back um <laughs> distracted by tiktok it got a <laughs> lot um it got really expensive high up, to go to the movies it's really right. expensive to go to take your family it's over 60 bucks like just to go to the movies um so a lot of people aren't you know people prefer like the streaming stuff because they already pay for it so it's like it just feels like it's included in um, and you know that is your nerdy news Personally, I, I feel like with the, the stuff that's on streaming, like, for example, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan seemed like a movie or a show that could have been served better as a shorter movie. Um, but there are some things that I look at, like, for example, um, in the Marvel's universe, um, they had the um, oh, my God, I can't think of the name now. Um, the Eternals, um, that would have been better served as a longer TV show, I think. So I don't necessarily mind the, the TV stuff as long as it's appropriate and it's not just trying to take a tiny story and stretch it out really, really long. <clears throat> But I am excited about all the new sabers we're going to see. And I do know that one of the main characters, her saber turns into a saber whip. So that will be um, interesting to see, you know, in the real world. Yeah, that would be that would be really cool to kind of see it put to use in a sense. Um, all right, so sir, I have our flow guys. You know, usually James Kaiser is our flow producer, but this week our flow is also our guest. So Van, take it away. Woohoo! I am excited about our guest tonight. We're gonna do the flow, and then I guess we'll just go right into the the guest segment. Um, but it's actually, the, the before intro, we do the intro and the flow, <clears throat> one video. I made them one video. Okay, so, so it'll just go right than in. Normal, right? so it's it's two minute intro, then sh intro flow, then straight into the interview. Hey, there's Kevin. I saw Kevin in a proper Sith outfit today. That was very, very cool. Um, I do want to say, um, uh, um, if you haven't had a chance to check out KCPMerch.com or KyberCave.com, please 
Goodness, I got the hiccups. Please do so. Um, we sell tons of sabers there. KCP merch is specifically our Kyber Cave merchandise, like this shirt. My other water bottles in the car. Um, but you can find stuff that will help support this channel specifically. And if you go to kybercave.com, we have all your saber needs taken care of. We've recently had some price drops. Um, and I mean, price drops of like 30 and 40 bucks on some individual sabers. So we've got some really good prices going right now make sure to check out kybercave.com we also have a discord and a patreon page and as little as a dollar you can help support uh this channel um and help you know support paying for things like editing and paying for stream yard and things like that um it definitely would help us out a lot and helps keep this show plus all of our other shows that we have going on the air all right so i done did said that <laughs> all right you our to australia L. Davy just asked if you guys trip to Australia. We do ship to Australia. It would they, not be our first one. Ship yeah. Internationally. yeah, they do ship internationally. So if you want to check out Kyber Cave, I'm going to link it. Just look at the, the the banner at the bottom there. It tells you a little bit more. What, what, that's the, of the, the website. It tells you the website. And don't uh, forget, y'all, we give away a free saber every 100 subscribers to our channel. Today, we picked up about seven or eight people at the con. Um, so we are at 1732 right now. Once we get to 1800, there will be another Saber giveaway. So the more you share, and please, please like. I also want to thank Night Vision, or Night, yeah, Night Vision, right? Um, Night Vision left some comments last week that actually hit our page. Um, so please make sure to leave comments. We love your comments always, and it helps get us out into the hour. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> Steven, here, Steven there, the comment, he is the shot manager. Uh, he knows, he goes, we shipped to Queensland last year. Uh, so I'm sure they'll ship to you if you're in Brisbane, wherever wherever you're at. Uh, they'll ship to you. Um, That's as long right. as you accept mail. Because <laughs> there's some places in the world that don't necessarily accept normal mail. As long as it's um, on this planet, this is not Futurama. We don't have an in, uh, intergalactic delivery service. Yes. So our wonderful guest here is a pretty amazing flow artist. I've seen some of his stuff putting his things together. And so please put your hands together for Saber Sonic. It's Sabers. <laughs> what is going hey. on daddy -o? oh just just hanging out just hanging out happy to be here oh man thank you so much for coming so i want to make sure it's clear because we had a little bit of change up saber sonic is that your performance name your stage name uh it's, yeah it's just the 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 name that i i picked when i like so i 
uh, I started out on Facebook, but then I, I, I opened a YouTube. I decided I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna open a YouTube and uh, I had to pick a username. So it, that's just what came to me. And then I was like, well, I opened a YouTube. I might as well start a TikTok. All right. That is absolutely amazing. You are quick with those hands, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. How Thank did you. you how did you get into flow? Uh so yeah, it's I, I guess about a month and a half or so after I got my first lightsaber. Um uh I saw a Michelle C. Smith video, uh, you know, oh, yeah. came up in my feed and I was like, whoa, that that looks pretty crazy. I was like, I I would love to be able to try to do something like that. And um yeah, that's that's just where the whole whole thing started. Uh then I was in a um I uh, found a lightsaber technique group in Facebook and there is a ton of amazing people there. And I pretty much just learned everything from, from watching everybody else and, and just trying to think of, uh, so it's like, if you learn a new move, you're like, all right, well, well, I figured that out. So what can I do like differently with this? Can I do it in the other d direction or can I make like a double out of this or, you know, Right, right. Now, do you have any kind of a sword background or anything? Do you have a martial arts background? Well, uh, I, I guess technically I have a martial arts background, but th that was like 30 years ago. And I, I literally did absolutely nothing for like 30 years as far as that went. Um, and, you know, getting the lightsaber and just starting to, to fl you know, when I started... When I started practicing, uh, a lot of what I was doing was more like kata, like so like uh, sequences, a lot of footwork and stuff like that. And uh, it was it was more difficult to, uh, to for me to film because I, I, I cover so much distance when 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 I'm moving like that. And right. um, so and then there is a also so kind of like a difference in style between like uh, like um trying to do something like like combat or dueling and then trying to do something like spinning and trying to blend those two styles i mean yes you can do it but like so i found that like certain viewers it seemed like certain people wanted to see one or the other and eventually i just got to the point where i was like well i'm gonna do what i enjoy so Right, right, right. Well, it's absolutely pheno phenomenal. Um, are you, have you, I'm guessing you've been a Star Wars fan for a long time. By the way, you've got a bunch of people here in the comments that absolutely love you. Everybody came out tonight to come see oh, you. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's <laughs> pretty, uh, uh, yeah, that, I can see the comments, but they're like really, really small. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I have to like zoom in on it. <laughs> yeah, you've um, a bunch of these names I can see. Everybody loves you. They talk about your um, your TikToks um, and how uh, one Brian Mayer says this man is insane on his transfers <laughs> of skills across weapons. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Thanks, Brian. He said you, you were the man. Speaking of which, your, uh, your nunchuck skills are incredible. How do you not bonk yourself in the face with that? uh tr i guess trying to keep my eye on it i mean it has happened uh like <laughs> is, if you guys are on my like 99 percent of what i do is is on TikTok. like the other platforms just get a tiny little bit of what i do uh i i love posting my bloopers um whenever i can i i find them hilarious um, right but yeah so i started spinning with the lightsaber and then um Probably within a few weeks or about a month, you know, uh, like I said, shortly after I joined TikTok and I found uh, Ike hands like like Aikido, but Ike hands. Right. And um, so he does nunchucks and like like freestyle. Well, he does everything. But like, yeah, it it blew my mind. I was like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So like I followed him and then he actually ended up following me back. And like, yeah, we start. Yeah. So. I basically learned like pretty much everything from him. And that actually started, uh, like I said, probably about a month after I started spinning the lightsaber. So mm. that's, that's so cool. What is it? What is it about the lightsaber that, that intrigues you as opposed to say spinning a regular sword or some people spin fire even, what is it that, that you like about this? Uh, Besides probably not catching yourself on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That That's one of the, I was going to say like uh, it, it's safer. Like I, I have a, uh, like a staff that's basically like a dowel. But like, I would much rather hit myself with a lightsaber than that. So <laughs> uh, it's much more forgiving. I don't know if it's because it's like hollow or because it's like in sections. It's not like one solid uh, like piece or what. But yeah, uh, I'd, I'd rather hit myself with a lightsaber than like a, something rock solid like like the right. chucks. Uh, that's not very fun. 
uh, people, yeah, people know that I share like my bloopers and uh, I even, there's a lot of stuff that I share. Like, so anybody that actually finds me and like, I can message you guys in private. Like I, I share like a bunch of stuff like in private, like as far as bloopers and stuff go that I don't share in public uh, just because I don't know how, how the, uh, the platform would handle some of it. Right. Now it says here, um, Brian says, uh, Wells is teaching us uh, the same mechanical mechanics with multiple tools. How many different pieces of equipment do you use? Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, the lightsabers, uh, you know, I use like, I I've even done flows with like katanas and stuff like that. Um, I have the nunchucks, of course. I'm, I made this like, uh, so I disassembled one of my cheap lightsabers and made like a, like a rope dart. Uh, like a glow like rope dart out of it i did that for a little bit but i'm i'm not like really really good at that i like the most fun for me is is the the lightsabers and the nunchucks and it's it's really really hard to pick which one i like more uh it's it i guess it just depends on which day day of the week it is but both of those are okay. super fun now i noticed obviously you were out in the woods uh, do you live like are you out in the middle of nowhere are you in a town or do you have other people that you practice with or are you by yourself usually uh yeah i'm usually just by myself when i started i was actually uh about an hour further away from town than i am right now but uh i'm lucky that like right now i do have woods behind the house that's where i am so who knows what the neighbors are thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but do you have like anybody in town that you practice with, or do you have to come up with all of this by yourself, or do you have other people that you kind of shoot ideas off of and you practice the other? Um, other than yeah, online, I, I yeah, I, on like that's what I was gonna say. Online, there's there's people that I talk to, and uh, we definitely we all learn from each other, you know. Um, uh -huh. So so that's really great. Locally, I know that there's. I, I believe there's a Saber Academy fairly close to here. And then I know that there's the Saber Academy over in Aiken, but um, my interest is more in like freestyle flow and just doing my own thing. Like I don't really personally have any interest in going out and having somebody else hit me with a lightsaber. <laughs> so are you I, I do that well Saber myself, Academy? You know? Are you I'm, in sorry, the what? Carolinas? Are you in the Carolinas somewhere? No, I'm in Georgia, but where I'm at is like right on the border. Uh, of okay. Georgia, South Carolina. So like Aiken, yeah, Aiken's like like 20, 30 minutes from here. Oh wow, okay. Tony, um, Tony Negro. We, that's one of our, our best friends on this show. Yeah, so, so I, you, yeah, um, I know that there's a Saber Academy over there. Uh I you know, like I said, mostly like what I do. I'm just enjoying myself, just finding uh different ways to challenge myself and, and do what I enjoy. So right. uh, I would love to have somebody to do like choreography. I love doing like, like choreography, like uh, duels and stuff like that. But as far as like actual dueling, like I, I personally don't, don't have much interest in that. Right, 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 right. No, I, I totally get it. What you're doing is a beautiful art form. I, and it seems to me that during the pandemic, like 20, around 2020 and 2021, I saw a whole new field of, of spin artists come out. Um, and it's probably because everybody was in quarantine. You, you had to find something that you could do by yourself. So people couldn't partner up. Um, so in that batch, I saw a whole bunch of people trying this out. Do you, um, do you feel like, well, I mean, how long have you been around spin again? I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, just a little over a year and a half, actually. Uh, my, my, over a year second, uh, my second lightsaber purchase, I, I got two lightsabers and a ripper blade from Kyber cave. Oh, oh, Hey, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and, and actually, speaking of that, Brian has the uh, the dark saber ripper that I got from you guys. I actually sent a lightsaber and that ripper blade to Brian so that he could get back into lightsabers himself. Oh, he, well, he's in the thank chat. you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a special type of saber? Do you modify your sabers in any ways? Like, do you put weights on certain ends to give it different spin or? Uh, no. So, I, um, you know, I, I, I've done, I did contact flow for like a little bit, but, um, no, I, yeah, mine are, are basically just like stock sabers. I prefer spinning with a NeoPixel, uh, lightsaber mm -hmm. because the weight in the, I actually prefer like a, like my favorite's probably about a 30 inch, but you know, 32 inches is anywhere between like 28, 32 inch NeoPixel is like my favorite to spin with. And, uh, right. uh, I learned, uh, early on, like how to, 
uh, mess with them. So I, I cut all my own blades down and, and do all that stuff. I see a lot of people in the comments talking about how you're a fantastic teacher. Do you find it easy to translate? Like sometimes I can do something right, but for me to explain to somebody else, particularly if they're not in the room with me, if they're online, sometimes it's a little harder to teach people or to train people uh, when they're not, you know, near you. Is that challenging for you? So, yeah, like trying to describe like verbally, like what I'm doing has always like, I'm more of a visual learner. I, I found out like when I started learning how to spin that, that I, you know, would just watch what somebody's doing. And if I could see it, then I, then I could go out there and work at it, you know? So I'm more of a visual learner and I can demonstrate stuff perfectly fine. But when it comes, you know, I'm more like pay attention to what I'm doing, like watch this, like, you know, <laughs> Right, um, but we all, you know, we all learn from each other. I, I feel like, like everything that I've learned, um, it, at least the the uh, foundation for everything I've learned from just watching everybody else in the, you know, in the community and stuff. You know, it's really amazing to me. I mean, like for you to be at the level that you're at in a year and a half, I've noticed it seems like, okay, I'm going to use a different example, but with skateboarding, right? Back in the 80s, you had certain tricks and then you had people like Tony Hawk, um, you know, that were the masters. <clears throat> when the Tony Hawk video game came out, people were doing all kinds of crazy combinations that nobody thought could be accomplished in the real world. But now the next generation of kids, because they grew up on the video games, they are doing these tricks that were almost impossible to do, you know, five, 10 years ago. It feels to me with the, this next wave of flow artists, you guys are doing amazing things. Like somebody, uh, my store manager was commenting on how high you were able to flip it and catch it behind your back. Um, and with such speed on that blade, um, I, it feels like the, the newer generations are just catching on quicker. Why do you think that is? Is it because of the, the trainers that you've had before or is there uh, something in your why? Week? Why? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. You know, uh, maybe the, the community gr is growing. You got more people out there doing different things. You know, I, I see so many people and, and this is another thing Like, there's so many like accounts that like don't even have like like a thousand followers that they're just amazing they're like so much more like they're out there putting the work in and practicing and they have the skill like they they are like way more skilled than these like huge accounts that get like a million plays on their videos and stuff like in my opinion right you know and like those are the people i love to follow and love to watch i you know can learn from from just watching watching these people you know do you go to cons and stuff like that and perform I have, group I've, I've actually never, I've never been to a con, so in any I, con, I need okay. to go at some point. You would be fantastic. We did a con last year in February and we brought out Joshua Pilla. I'm not sure if you know um, Josh yeah. and the audience was just, to see it in live is just mesmerizing. Yeah, Joshua is amazing. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris from Saber Flux, he, he's amazing. Chris yeah, Gaston. those guys are like that, you know, and I know that Chris, uh, like is, is actually like a performer and like, I, I guess if I was going to do something like that, I would need to get in touch with him and, and, and find out like how to go about that. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm mainly just, uh, doing what I enjoy, just, just trying to find different ways to challenge myself and, you know, ways that amuse myself, you know? Right. Well, you know, there's lots of like, like I said, we paid Josh Pilla to come out to our show. I mean, he was in Texas at the time, so we had to fly him out and everything. So there's a lot of opportunities. I, wa I want to see you on that stage in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you done any kind of stage performance or anything before? Would that bother you to be in front of a thousand people staring at you? Uh. I you know, I would just make sure that I'm doing something that I, I got really, really dialed in. I wouldn't be doing anything like, like really experimental probably. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, you, you do stuff like so many times and, and you, uh, you build up that muscle memory and, and just, you know, have it down to where, you know, it's, it's just like so dialed in, you can go out there and do it whenever you want. Right. <laughs> what about stamina? Is it hard to do say two minutes in a row of flipping or, uh, 
Not really. I mean, I, you know, sometimes I'm out there for, for a few hours. I, I used to, about this time last year, I was doing live streams on my TikTok that were, I'd be out there for like three hours. Wow. Uh, just Do you have sweating a like a maniac and just, you know, yeah, spinning <laughs> like an, yeah. Do you, I, I want to ask, do you have a favorite trick and also... How do you become inspired to try new things? Are you watching other people and saying, oh, I can do that? Or are you trying to create new uh, things in your head? So, yeah, I, I, I learned, you know, like I said, I've picked up everything from, from watching other people. And then like when I, you know, when I learn a move, uh, I try to think, you know, well, can I do this differently? Can I do it in the other direction? Or can you make a double out of it? Or can you do it with this hand? Or can you, you know, like just, you know, how... It was like when I learned the OB Annie, the OB Annie was like the, the most weird thing I, I had ever learned. I was hung up on that. I was convinced I was doing it wrong for like days right. and uh, until I actually, I said, can you, can you record me so I can see what I'm doing wrong? And uh, we recorded it and I was like, oh, I, that looks right. I guess I'm supposed to practice that. And right. um, so, you know, I like to tell people, you know, when you learn the OB Annie, like, don't stop there. That's like the, that's like the first step, like figure out what you can, you know, like start moving with it, turn with it or do it with the other hand or do a reverse OB any, or, you know, it's right. just like, a, like stage one right there. Now I noticed with you, you do a lot of, you know, the spins and the throws and stuff. Are you interested? Like for instance, Christian Castro has his body. Um, I can't, I can't remember what the type of sabers, but he has specific names for the sabers, but they're more yeah. for like rolling on your body yeah. or through your arms. Yeah. So that's, con so, you know, he, he's done contact. contact flow for years and years, uh, which is basically, you know, where you're, you're trying to make sure you stay in contact. It's like a balancing thing and you're trying to stay in contact and push into it basically to, you know, right. And so that's why he designed his sabers the way that he did was so that because the average one isn't really um, like, idea like you can do it don't get like i i i was doing it with mine but like it's not right. ideal for it and that's why he made it's those not weighted. It was, yeah it was more ideal it's where you take the weight uh more more out towards the the ends than in the center mm. and it, it just makes it to where the reason that you do that uh is for the inertia for when you're not actually holding it and physically spinning it that it's going to keep right. spinning on its own by having the weight out there towards the tips which is right. kind of like uh, why I like the nunchucks. You know, the nunchucks are, to, to me, the way that I think about it, it, it's just like a contact flow weapon, but it's it's very, very fast. Right. A, a lot of times when you see that stuff, they're not going super, super fast, and that's because they need to stay in contact with it. But uh, with the chucks, it kind of flips that on its head. You're, you're able to do contact stuff extremely fast. Right, and they have saber chucks out there, uh, out there as well. I, yeah, I have two. They're they're broke, but yes, I have two. <laughs> uh, is there? It seems like you had men, uh, mentioned Michelle C. Smith, and when I first started the Saber Store, I started looking up uh, you know videos on Saber. She was one of the first names I came across. But it seems like everybody has a little bit of a different style. She's actually really good at mixing up the body contact um, part of it with the throwing and stuff. Do you have something you prefer? Like, is there something you just like doing more? Um, basically what everybody sees me doing is like what I enjoy doing. Um, I, I was doing contact stuff last year, um, for, for quite a bit. And, uh, I eventually just, you know, like I said, I'm just doing like what I enjoy, what I, you know, when I go outside and practice, like I want to have a good time. So like, that's the whole point is to have a good time. Right. You know? Do you um, ever see yourself? Uh, like Daniel, I think it's Daniel Makashi or Musabi. Makashi or Musabi. Um, he had a flow video where he was actually using fans and like the 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 rice hats and things. Like he was using different objects. Could you see yourself using different types of objects to do your flow arts? Um, I'm, you know, I see these uh, poi spinners. You know, that's not like the, the mechanics are all like the same, you know, it's, it's very, when I see it, it's, it looks very similar to like nunchaku. Um, but, but it's different in a way too, or, or I guess kind of somewhere between nunchucks and like, uh, like a rope dart is probably where mm -hmm. that would, would that exist. But they're, you know, they're all, all this stuff, even the lightsabers, the staff, like everything like that, they're there. It's all the same circles and the same basic mechanics. 
So you can transfer like, you know, like you learn how to do an OB ante with a lightsaber. Well, you can do the same thing with nunchucks or a staff or a rope dart and, and vice versa. So uh, some of these moves that I've come up with were, it was just, you know, it was like, oh, well, I do this with the nunchucks. Like, can I do something similar with a lightsaber or like vice versa? Right. You know? Right, right, right. right. <clears throat> are there things that, you, that you've that you been trying to do that you just haven't been able to get yet? Are, are there certain degrees of tricks that are just really difficult? Um, yeah, so my, my left hand, you know, uh, there, I, I need to work on my left hand, like, <laughs> quite a bit more than I do. Uh, my my <laughs> earbud's falling out. But, um, you know, I, I do okay with my left, but there, there's like huge holes in my game uh, with my left hand. Like, like even just doing like grip switches, like uh, digit grip switches with my left is uh, at the moment still, still very challenging. So, you know, it's just going out there. And, and like I said, once you practice stuff like so much, um, you know, you're going to, so repetition is like the quickest way to building muscle memory. And once you build up that muscle memory, like, you know, you can just do it whenever you want. Um, right. with the throws, a lot of it, you know, is keeping your eyes on it and, and watching it and just, uh, learning. So like throwing it is kind of more of muscle memory. And then the catches are more of like watching it and just learning how to see that catch that you're going to do. Right. Right. It's kind, of hard, like I said, it's kind of hard to describe like, like verbally I'm, I'm better at like demonstrating this type of stuff. Right. Um, uh, Night Vision said your throws and tosses are boss. Um, do you have preferred sabers, um, or can you pretty much just pick up any saber and start going to town? Uh, I mean, yeah, any saber will work. I personally prefer the, like, like I said, around a 30 or 32 inch like NeoPixel, just because it has that weight in the blade. If, if you're holding something like dead center of like where it's, uh, like balance point is, yeah, right? it's going to feel the same on this end that it's going to feel on this end. So you're not going to feel any blade presence or whatever, essentially. Um, it's right. Like, hold on. Let me show you. <clears throat> so like with the nunchucks, right? Like I can feel this when I'm spinning it around. I feel all this weight out here. And that's right. kind of like why I like the NeoPixels because I can feel the weight of the blade. I know exactly where it is because I can feel it right if if it was um if i had the same weight on both ends then it it's almost like transparent right 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 that makes a lot of sense somebody's saying uh left-handed month let's go <laughs> um what do you think what do you think is is are there is it harder is the muscle memory harder than like the brain like do you ever find your brain getting in the way of your body um does that honestly, make sense just when i i understand what you're saying um so when i get into flow you know that's that's another thing so you start you're you're paying attention to like what you're doing and you become like super basically like hyper focused on like what you're doing and you're just in that zone like where right. everything else basically like disappears it's it's almost like meditation kind of like a movement meditation where like just the whole world disappears and it's just you and your flow object. And it's right. very, it's very therapeutic. Um, you know, uh, when I started, when I started spinning, it was actually at the time I was actually in very, very poor health. Um, I actually bought the lightsaber because I made it to a birthday that I didn't think I was going to see. And oh, um, wow. after I'd had it for about a month and a half and saw Michelle C. Smith do that, uh, do a, uh, you know, I saw a couple of those videos. I was like, I really want to try that. But, uh, you know, I could only, I could only even spin the lightsaber for like a few minutes before I started feeling like really weird. And within like a, like a week or within a couple of weeks, I started noticing like, wow, I actually, I, I feel normal again. Like when I flow, when I go out there and flow for a little bit, I would actually right. feel physically like normal again for the first time in ages. And it was amazing. And around that time, I was like, you know, it's not just that I, I physically feel better. It's like mentally when I when I'm done, when I'm done flowing for like a while, it's uh, like I'm in such a good like headspace and in such a good like mindset and everything. Um, and that that really, really got my attention in, in a major way that I just 
you go out there and and flow for a while it's just like exercise i guess you know you you feel really really good afterwards yeah you know it it's very interesting you said that because you're probably <laughs> at least the second or third person I can think of. I can think of, um, we talked to a, um, a flow artist named Alan Eason before, um, and he has said started flow after getting into an accident where he had like collapsed lungs and uh, he was in very bad health. Um, but he was saying how flow kind of helped him revitalize his whole body and get his body back into shape. And I hear so many some people compare flow to meditation. Yeah, it was it was a like a huge, huge game changer. Like I said, um, it's it's hard to even describe this. But like, you know, when I started out, I'd go out there and flow and it was just amazing. I'd be like. Oh my, like, I feel, I, almost, I feel like normal. I feel like myself again. Like I'm actually, I feel like I could go, you know, do whatever now, you know, it's, it was, it was amazing. It was, uh, so yeah, that definitely like really, really got me hooked on it. It was, it was such an amazing just way to, to, to exercise and like center yourself and just, you know, clear your head, uh, and, and be like super sharp, you know? Mm -hmm. Have you have you thought about or have you tried? I mean, and some people, you know, just doesn't work for them, but incorporating like your body, like I'll see some people do cartwheels sometimes and catch it or roll rolls on the ground and things like that. Um, what, what about you? Is that I don't I don't know if your physical health would allow you to do those kind of things. Or <laughs> I, I think now, it, you know, it probably would be all right. Uh, I remember when I first you know got into it, you know, because I, I remember from from decades ago, like doing like, um, uh, like rolls and stuff like that. And I went to go do it and it was, you know, it was very hard, like hard packed dirt where I was at. So like, it wasn't very forgiving. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm probably a little too old to be, be, be putting my body through that type of stuff now. Um, You're right. but yeah, like, uh, I'm sure like cartwheels and rolls, I could, I, I could probably handle just fine. I don't know about doing like, you know, like flips, like somersault <laughs> flips and stuff like that. I, Right. I probably don't need to like risk that at, at my age. <laughs> can, can I ask you only because you brought it up a couple of times? May I ask what age you are? I'm sorry. My saber shut off. What was that? Can I ask how old you are? I'm like 43 or I almost 44. So yeah, in my mid forties right now. So I, I just wanted to put this. I wanted to hear you say that so I could put it out to the audience that it's never too late to try. You don't have to be a 20 year old, you know, completely flexible Gumby. You can be a little bit older and still get a lot out of it. Yeah, I was already like a couple of years into my my I, I think I was like 42 when I started. So, you know, yeah, it's never, never too late to start. And it's just it it was like such a game changer as far like i i feel like i'm in the best shape that i've been in since i was like like a 15 year old or something like that like i'm in such good wow. shape now and it's just it's like mind boggling like um how much it's done for me um how much do you think you practice in a week a couple of hours 5 hours 10 hours in a week in a, in a, uh, <laughs> I, Are you out there every on, day? On average, on average, uh, probably somewhere between like seven and ten hours. But I mean, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll go out. Sometimes I go out a few times a day. But sometimes I'll go out there just like in one session. I'll be out there for like a couple hours, like working at something, like just relentlessly working at or drilling like a like some new something new that I want to do. I'll just sit there and do it like over and over and over until I get it, and like over and over and over until you like build that muscle memory. Um, sometimes I can go out there and like, I'm only outside for like 10 minutes and, and do like everything that I, I feel like I need to do that day. But like, you know, other days I'm out there for two, three, four hours. So, wow. And there's even a comment here. Uh, night vision says that, uh, he's 50 and pushing or he's pushing 50 and disabled and still able to get out there and do flow. So that's great. It seems like great exercise. Uh, e e even if you have other disabilities. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Cause it's not like, uh, yeah, I mean, depending on like how hard you want to push yourself, but it's, it's not super demanding like physically, but, um, right. It does so much for you. Uh, I don't know if it's cause you're, 
you're breathing and you got your your circulatory system going and stuff but like it's it's just amazing like uh how much the like the benefits from from spinning and and flow just in general like both physically and mentally it's it's been such a game changer for me like uh uh like yeah i'm totally like hooked on it <laughs> And I, and you were talking about wanting to try choreography. Are you are you uh, do you have like routines in your head that you'd like to try, or do you want to like duplicate I, the you know the Obi Annie scene or? So yeah, I've done like a little bit of choreography with with my kids and stuff, but that's really like the only person that I've that I have to like actually like go out there like come on guys, will you guys do this with me and stuff? Like I I I don't know anybody in my area. I, like I said, I know there's th these academies and they duel and stuff like that, but I just haven't actually gone over there. Uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, if if you guys are in Georgia or anywhere around here and, and would like to do choreography, I, I love it. It's it's like the most fun, like coming up with like choreographing stuff and doing that stuff. It's right. like the most fun that you can have. Right. You can't help but turn into a little kid again. Yeah. It's oh, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Like my daughter, like so like every time like we do a choreography thing. Of course, she's the one that wins the duel, you know, so she's like <laughs> jumping around or like kicking me while I'm on the ground or something. <laughs> right, right. It's awesome. Um, there was a comment way early up here by Mike, um, Mike Berger of the Jedi Council of, Amaze, uh, of America. He was talking about Dragon Con. I guess they do a parade. Um, and he was saying that you would be incredible in that parade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've, I've never actually been to any of the cons. I've never, um, never actually like performed or anything like that. So, uh, it would definitely be like, really, I, I think it'd be really interesting. Uh, hey, I, I don't know, Burger, I know. but I, I do have like, I don't have like a Jedi robe or anything. I, I think you mm -hmm. see me like in the, the ninja type outfits. I have a, a black one and I have a white one. So I've got two different ones of those, but I do have a full, uh, like, mando um armor kit i've got my my helmet right here um, um i've got a revan mask so, nice. that's beautiful yeah your your photo you've got the the uh the revan mask with the outfit on yeah, <laughs> yeah uh mike Berger. i don't know if you can get a hold of uh Walsh after this but uh mike might have some good contacts of different cons um and he might know some people that can get you into uh as a performer uh for different cons. we're over here on the west coast so i don't have a lot of information for you but um we do have a lot of contacts on the east coast that maybe can get you in to performing at some of these shows well yeah that that would be that would be absolutely crazy yeah do you do you think you can perform in like say full jedi robes i know you have a ninja outfit but those are <clears throat> ninja outfits tend to be a little more tight and conforming uh, jedi robes are a little more flowing and well I, i've done it in the, the mandalorian armor and my helmet and, and i do have like a little bit of like a case it's not like all the way to the ground because I, I i typically have like a pretty wide stance when i'm doing stuff so like i didn't want one that was super long i, I figured i'd be tripping on it like quite a bit but as yeah. far as like uh, avoiding like what I'm wearing with like spinning and stuff like that, uh, like I have to do that when I wear the the Mandalorian stuff and I spin. Yeah. And for those that don't know a lot about the Mandalorian mask or anything, I find that absolutely amazing, especially with the Revan mask, because the eye line is so thin on there. You pretty much have to memorize where your saber is in the air. It's yeah it seems like yeah. you're moving more on um a body memory than you are an actual visual sight line yeah i apologize with, with my boy oh it's fine with with my uh mandalorian helmet so it you know it's already the visor's a little bit tinted i tinted up this section like quite a bit more so you wouldn't see my face pressed up against it but like i put chameleon tint over it and i guess it's just the cheap chameleon tint that i use it's kind of like hazy or foggy and right. uh, you know and i'm out there at night so it's i'm i'm basically blind when you guys see me flowing with in in the mandalorian armor like i'm pretty much blind and wow. uh you know it's a it's just amazing that i can do anything in that and then the revan mask if you guys can see yeah. this like this the eye slit on on my mask anyway i'm sure there's better ones but like the one that i have this is like is as wide as a pencil right right like <laughs> it's ridiculous 
<clears throat> what about breathing and something like that? Because obviously you're you're you know exerting a lot of energy and stuff. Is it hard to breathe? Um, let alone see when you're wearing your mask like that doing a routine. Uh, not too, you know, it depends on if you get like, if you're out there doing it for a while and you get super winded, uh, you know, I found like in the, like in the summertime, if I'm wearing like my ninja mask, even, you know, it's, it's covering up all this right here. So eventually, right. you know, you're like, uh, I would notice that I would get like winded, like quicker, like a fairly, uh, like noticeably quicker than I normally would, but right. you, know, you, you keep going. Yeah, everybody in the comments is absolutely amazed that you're able to do that in a Revan mask. <laughs> yeah, the Revan one is actually because I said that that slit, this 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 eye slit right here is just like it's right. as big as a pencil. You know, it's right. It's, it's well, so hard it, to see. Uh, uh, Mike and Jedi Council is saying that they usually have handlers just for the cosplayers because they can't see. So I can't imagine throwing around a glow stick and trying to do that without being seen. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you're out there like, you know, like I'm out here in the woods and, you know, in the dark, in the woods with a lightsaber and the lightsaber, like that's going to make it where like the only thing you see is the blade. Like that's the only, you know, everything else is just like pitch black and all you see is the blade. So catching the hilt is just, you know, it's just learning how to see it. You know, you, you've done throw like so many times that it's, it's kind of like muscle memory and just knowing how to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. That's gotta be super incredible muscle memory to have. And just so you know, I, I, I don't want you to think I'm bored or anything. I have my hand like this so I can read the comments that are, I got the bifocals oh, going on down here so I can oh, read no the comments that are, that are coming in. They're really tiny. <laughs> I wish I could see, yeah. They're, they're, they're tiny on my screen too. So if, if people have questions like you, you'd have to point it out to me. Yeah, don't forget if you're in the audience, you um, this is your time to talk um, to Supersonic, Mr. Walls. If you have any questions or anything, just leave them down here in the comments, and we will make sure to get them uh, out on air. Do you have anything that you're working on that you're trying right now, or things that you you want to expand into and do that you haven't quite nailed yet? Uh, you know, like I said, I, I probably need to transfer like a lot of the stuff that I do pretty fairly easily with my right hand and, and get better at it with my left. Um, like I said, most of the time I, I go out there and, and sometimes I'm drilling, but a lot of times I'm, I'm just enjoying myself lately. It seems like I've been working more at like combos and sequences and just seeing like, can I do this and this back to back? Can I, can I put all the, like these three things back to back to back and stuff like that. And just getting more dialed in with the stuff that I already know, but like, so I've got this uh, variation of the underarm blind that I've been, it's, it's, I don't know, it's probably been like six months. I've been like, you, you guys see it like pretty much every flow video I do now. And that's because I'm, I'm working at it still. And it's, it's really only like uh, this past month or so that it's become like so much more reliable than like where I, where I had it before. So. Right. right, right. <laughs> given, uh, given where you are now, if you had the opportunity, um, and I don't know if you have a nine to five job, but if you had the opportunity to go on tour doing this, do, is this something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah, I would. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I would love to do that. Uh, I'm more of a freelance photographer at the moment. So I, I work when I need to work. And when I, when I don't have to work, I, you know, I don't have to. So. Right. Right. You can combine the two hobbies, your, your photography and your, uh, your, your traveling with spin. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to be, we're going to be wrapping up here in, in the next couple of minutes. Do you have any advice for people that are just beginning, uh, their spin adventures? Uh, just beginning, uh, just, you know, uh, I don't know. Like I said, when I was starting out, I just, I, I would just watch what everybody else would, would be doing. Uh, I learned, so when I first started out, like uh, Matt Torres, I, I think that you know who he is. Like, uh, so he owns a lightsaber yeah, technique uh, page. Like, other than Michelle C. Smith, like he he was like the first one that I like really really latched onto and was like, this this is amazing. Like, this is good stuff right here. I need to you know like learn learn this stuff. Uh, also, right. Juniper Rye, she's amazing. She's phenomenal. Uh, if you you know. Everybody needs to be following her. She's I, I still like I, I just absolutely love like every one of her videos. There's there's so many uh, there's so many people out there, even people with with 
you know, I, I you know, like less than a thousand followers that that are absolutely amazing. They can uh, dual wield like better than I do. Um, they, everybody works at their own. So like everybody has like their own interests. Some people are, are more interested in combat or like choreography or contact stuff or, you know, spinning and flipping. And, uh, you know, so everybody has like their own interest. And and I, I feel like we all learn from just watching each other you know right you have a comment here from uh martin montgomery that says absolutely insane <clears throat> i never even processed that you do this stuff in the dark and it must take insane time to drill into muscle memory yeah just uh yeah just doing it over and over yeah martin martin is amazing by the way uh like he 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 is like the master when it comes to doing uh nunchucks like digit work with the nunchucks it's just mind-boggling like uh, he's He's on another, like, I'll, I don't think I'll ever be able to do like a five digit combo. My fingers just don't work that way. But, right. um, I can do the three digit, um, but like the, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Uh, so, you know, like I said, just uh, repetition is, is the quickest way to, to building muscle memory, just doing stuff over and over and over. And like, yeah, you're going to build that muscle memory if you do that. So right. um, do you, doing it in the do dark you have any goals? just learning okay. how to, yeah, just doing it in the dark. Uh, you have to see it. You have to be able to see the catches uh, just in in your head. You have to like know where that hilt's going to be at to be able to catch it. Or or with the nunchucks, uh, you know, same same thing. So, right, you have to have an incredible um, what do you call it? A spatial um, yeah recognition or spatial. I don't know how to say it, uh, but be just yeah, being see, aware I, yeah. of your environment. Proprioception. Thank you. Thank you, Mez. Yeah, I'm, I'm better at like demonstrating stuff than trying to like verbally like explain it. I, you know, I I try my best, but like I'm I, I feel like I'm I'm just better at demonstrating it. And you know, I'm a visual learner, so when I when I do stuff, I try to show it. Like even in my videos, you know, I try to like the way that I edit them, uh, like come in close on my hands or like slow stuff down at certain points. It's so if you're trying to learn it, like you, you should be able to learn it just from what you should be able to be like, Oh, that's what he did. Now I'm, I'm going to go out there and try that. Like, just like I, I was doing when I was learning stuff. Um, like the, there, there's a, a handful of stuff that I, that I learned from watching Juniper's videos. It's just, uh, like super, super cool. <laughs> yeah. What do you see? Do you have any, um, <clears throat> goals or things that you want to do in the next few years? Uh, I was, I was making a lot more money a couple of years ago than I am right now. So I, I'm going to have to like, like start making some more, I'm going to have to, to focus more on, on income at some point here very soon. But, uh, uh, with, with flow stuff, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep working at it. I might get back, you know, if I had, if, if, if I had like a saber flux, like lightsaber, like I would probably get back into the, the contact flow, like a lot more. I, I think that's kind of one of the reasons that I put it down is because mm -hmm. uh, my equipment's just, it's not like ideal for it. I can do it, but it's so much more challenging to do it uh, with, with your just average saber, you know? Right, 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 right. Got to try to work something out with Christian, see if we can get you a saber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need to get one of those. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I just enjoy what I'm doing. I, I love uh, spinning. Uh, I wish that uh, I had somebody around here to do choreography with. That stuff is just so fun, so fun to do. If anybody I, I out there is in the, if anybody out there is in the Georgia area, make sure to get in touch with them. Um, we're going to have all of your information is going to be in the description down below. So uh, if you have your TikTok. Pardon me, Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff is going to be down there. For anybody that is interested in following um, the Saber Sonic, uh, make sure to go down to the descriptions and check that out. And for all the brand new people that are here, remember, we do a show every single week. Um, sometimes we have flow artists. Sometimes we bring out Saber makers. Sometimes we bring out cosplayers or even Star Wars celebrities. Um, but we do a, a show every week. So make sure you're tuning in and sharing all this so we can uh, spread this more across across the Sabre community. Well, do you have anything final that you want to leave with people? Any inspirational words or thoughts or um, things that you people want people to look out for? 
Um, I, I don't know. I got, I don't, yeah, just, uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, this community could be growing like, like even more than it is. I, I feel like, um, um, yeah, there's, there's just, there's so much that, that can be done in the lightsaber community. It's, and it's, that's another thing, like in general, it's been like the best experience and the best community, like I've ever been a part of, like, it's just, everybody's so uh, welcoming and supportive and it's just amazing, just amazing to be a part of the, of the community. And if you guys um, are followers on Facebook, I know uh, Matt Torres has a group called Lightsaber Techniques. Um, and I think a lot of the flow artists come into, into that channel if I'm not uh, if I'm not incorrect. Yeah, that's uh, that that's where I got my start before uh, I found everybody else like on TikTok. There's well, there was so much to learn there, like so, so, so much over there. Lots of great information for any of you out there in the audience that are interested in flow yourself. Of course, you can get a hold of, uh, of Saber Sonic um, and then he can lead you to different directions. So many people on here just start talking about how you're an amazing teacher. Um, so, you know, please keep up the great work. It takes people like you to keep this community growing and building. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I, I still feel uh, fa like fairly like a newcomer because I, I mean, I haven't even been doing this for like two years. So right. you know, right. there's, there's still so much to learn, so much to learn. And already in that short time, you're regarded as one of the top. So congratulations to you. Uh, I, know I appreciate it. I know for myself, um, you know, we're constantly looking at different Sabre groups and Sabre videos and stuff. And I remember seeing you and I messaged our producer right away. I was like, who is this guy and why haven't we had him on our show so far? Um, so, yeah, that's when we reached out to you and, and uh, try to see if you would be willing to come on. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Oh, no problem. Uh, I, it's it's great. I, I feel like super weird, like talk like whenever I have to like get on camera and talk, I, uh, I don't know. I think I'm more of like an introvert, like naturally, but like, um, <laughs> you know, once you start going, it's, it's fine. I try to remind right. myself every time I've done like a live stream, like I'm so nervous, like beforehand, you just have that right. like anxiety that's like through the roof. But, um, you know, afterwards you, you realize like, Oh, that, that wasn't that bad. That was pretty easy. So, <laughs> All right. Well, I know I'm definitely going to be watching. Uh, um, what is the, what is the, the the center to say? We'll be watching your career with great interest. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I, I really enjoyed the uh, the stuff that I got from your store too. By the way, so thank you, thank you, thank you. We we I, I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> and, and Brian is loving the uh, the ripper blade that I got a dark saber ripper blade from you guys, and like he he loves that thing too. So that's really really good. You can't be Gary Ripper. Gary Ripper makes incredible product. I love Gary. He's a really cool guy too. Uh, well, awesome. thank you so much um hopefully we'll have you on you know in another six months or so hopefully by that time you'll be appearing at shows all over the country <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that would, yeah that would be a crazy experience <laughs> all right well thank you for staying up with us and uh we will catch you later we'll see you on the internet my friend and night vision thank you very much for the compliment <laughs> all right man roll that film <laughs>
Doesn't that make you always want to get out there and start throwing around a lightsaber? I mean, I mean, I got it ready. <laughs> so I, I mean, some of you know, but not everyone does. I did martial arts a long time ago, um, and I, I do miss it. I just physically can't like really do martial arts anymore. Um, I can't do contact sports. Um, right. But doing saber flow just sounds kind of tempting because being disabled now, like, and knowing even someone else who's disabled that's doing it, um, makes me very tempted to like get out there and maybe just move around and get 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 that movement going. Take it to the gym with me. <laughs> You're right, right. Well, um, you know, there's a lot you can do. Even if like I know you have feet problems and things like that, so there's a lot of upper body stuff you can do with the spinning and the swinging and things as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd be, it'd be really cool to kind of get into it a little bit more, especially now that I have two sabers. And, you know, I have to say, I want to thank, um, all of, um, of, uh, Saber Sonic Waltz's, uh, followers that came in tonight. There's nothing that makes me feel better than to see, you know, the people who really appreciate certain types of arts, whether it's companies that are making sabers, flow artists, cosplayers. I love seeing their communities come in here and give them such support. It, it just only speaks to the character of the person that we have on screen with us. You can tell that, uh, Waltz is obviously very loved in the community. Yes, very much so. So many people were sharing so much love there. Uh, uh, just, just endless amounts of love for him. So, uh, some stage duels, Mr. Burgers. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you so much, Super Sonic, for coming on. I very much enjoyed that. If you guys want to find out more information about him, I did post his links in the comments, but also if you're watching the upload in the description below, you can find out the guest links there. Um, both his Instagram and his TikTok were there. The Facebook is like brand new, I believe. So uh, I wasn't able to get that link in time. Um, but you can check out his information below. TikTok is what he's, I know, most active on. So. Uh, so yeah, while we got everybody everybody here, I want to let you know our guest next week is going to be Centerpoint Sabres. <clears throat> it is a relatively new Sabre company, but what caught my interest about them is they specialize in stunt Sabres. For those that aren't, uh, that may or may not know, a stunt Sabre is a Sabre that lights up with no sound. They're primarily used for actual, um, like, you know, competitive fighting and things like that. Uh, because in a competitive fight, the more electronics you have, the more stuff you got to get fixed. Mm -hmm. So a simple light up saber is often um, the best way to go. But in this day and age, it's almost a lost art form. I don't even, I can't think of, um, I can think of maybe one or two companies that even provide stunt sabers nowadays. Nowadays, everybody wants, you know, all the sounds and lights and everything. So uh, finding a really good uh, stunt saber company is, um, is a definitely good thing. So so we got center point savers. We got some really, really good shows coming up <clears throat> in a couple of weeks. We actually have a band that some of you guys may know of called the three POs. Um, and they go on tour playing star Wars music and they're a huge, a widely known I'm band. So, so shocked. Yeah. What other kind of music no, would not. they be playing that day? Um, so we have a great show for you every week. Make sure to tune in every week. Like, please like the show. Uh, leave a comment, share, and subscribe. Um, and then, like I said, we give away a free saber every 100 subscribers. So yes. hopefully you'll keep coming back and you can get yourself a free saber. Exactly. And um, Metso here in Aubrey, who is Captain Lady Moon on our channel, um, we are working with Graveyard and Frey Girl and Shadu. Um, doing a role playing game, kind of like a, a critical role DD kind of style, but um, we are doing that. We've got a bunch of episodes recorded. We're just getting some of those edited and such now. Um, and so look forward to that. You can actually see the teaser trailer for it on our channel here. Um, so you can check that out as well. Yes. And that's called what again? It is called The New Order. The New Order. So yeah, and don't forget, guys. We have a ton. We have almost three hundred videos in our history. So there is a ton of content for you to check out. We have cosplay making videos. We have fight videos. Uh, we even have health videos. For goodness' sake. <laughs> yes, we, we have a show that's currently on sabbatical, but we have a show called Hearts of Kyber, which is about physical and mental health discussion. Um, if you would like to see that come back, let us know. We actually are just kind of taking an extended break from it for a while. Um, and we'll, we'll give you more info about that when we actually do have that information. 
Um, so thank you guys right. so much for joining us. Um, I will, we will be seeing you guys soon. Um, and Mezzo here uh, will be hopefully doing some more recording of some content as well for you guys. Um, Ooh, we, miss, we miss seeing you game playing. Yes, if you if you want, you can actually catch me my my normal my personal YouTube channel. I am doing Minecraft content on right now and some Sherlock Holmes stuff. So if you want to check that out, it's just Metso JD. Uh, and there's on, plenty of gameplay on, in our in our history as well with you playing. Yes, absolutely. Lots if, you, of if you want to go look at old videos. Um, you can find them uh, health videos at San Wang. I'm if it, I'm not sure if Van specifically uh, referencing it's hearts of Kyber. Yeah, yeah hearts, hearts of, of Kyber. Kyber. Not not health ones like here's a good diet for you. Nothing like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so uh, they're they're fun. Kyber. We what we do is on Hearts of Kyber, we choose a different topic every week. Um, let's say um, anxiety, and then we try to find video clips and stuff in popular culture like movies and things like that to relate it to you and then talk a little bit about that so it's a different topic every single week yes, yes and yes, i think we have 50 some odd episodes online yeah we have over 50 episodes of parts of kyber and so go ahead and check those out because if there's uh something you're interested in learning more about they go over the medical side and how it's portrayed in media so you can get a lot of good information and also how it's portrayed in media incorrectly sometimes all right, guys, exactly. thank you so much for joining us this week. We will see you next week with Mikhail from Kyush. I can't say it right. <laughs> wait, let me pull it up so I can say it. I want to make sure I say it correctly. Oh, wait. Yeah, I was right. Okay, Kyush in Ludo Sports. He is in Australia himself. All oh, right, that guys, is. Oh, I got my week. week. I got my weeks backwards. <laughs> yes, I forgot. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a good week, and we'll see you later. Enjoy Talk of the Town. Bye. Adios.